A while back, I used this machine to demonstrate that a 9610 hook assembly would not only function, but would allow the use of 20U bobbin cases which would in turn allow the use of standard 15 by 1 needles. I'm going to replace it with a new hook assembly that I'm piecing together from new parts so that I will probably never need to change it again for the life of this machine. That is a 20U bobbin case and an L-type bobbin. This is an original 9610 hook assembly that has a 20U shuttle installed. This is an unmodified position finger. I modified the slot in the shuttle instead so that it would have the proper clearance. This gear case has been filled with standard automotive chassis grease. Uh, some people prefer to use the blue marine grease I don't plan to take this machine swimming, so that really doesn't matter that much. Some people say you should use the So Retro grease. That particular formula has been optimized for use on Singer sewing machine motors. It has the right melting point, the proper viscosity. For that purpose, there is nothing better but the more universal lubricant is called for here. Uh, I stick with the standard grease because that's what's available and any modern grease is going to be an improved product over what was available when this machine was manufactured. Okay, this is a high rose hook for the 9610. Brand new. And it has the standard 9610 interior. And it has three set screws where the normal 306 has only two. I'm going to start by removing the position finger. It has to come off before the hook anyway. doing a job like this, I prefer the old style ice cube tray. It keeps things nice and neat and organized. So, the position finger is out.
I bend so many needles by forgetting to remove them before I get started on these things. Go. Okay, that's looking good. This shaft that the hook assembly fits on has a turned down portion and a flat shoulder. When the hook is properly installed, it seats against this flat shoulder. Full length of this shaft is inside. It goes on through, there's a worm gear and then a bushing and then it comes out the back side where this collar is installed. See there's two screws there that hold that on the shaft. This is what controls the end play. See a little bit of end shake there? I will take care of that when I put the new hook assembly on. So, once that end play is taken care of and the new hook is installed, you need to set the needle clearance. And you do that with this screw right here. It holds the bushing in place and when you loosen this screw, you can move the hook in and out. Now, when you do that, it's going to change the position of the worm gear inside. So the last thing you do is check the hook timing. So the time has come to play mix and match. I start with a regular screwdriver set and then I have some bits that I have modified with a Dremel to get the proper fit I need for these screws. and there is the shuttle. Now, this one here is a brand new 9610 shuttle, so we remove the jib on this hook body. Seems to work okay. Well, I have them out. Let me zoom in for a close comparison. There's the worn one, and there is the new. And you can see there is quite a noticeable difference between the two. This worn one was working in this 306 without skipping any stitches, but somewhere down the line it probably would have started. So, like I said, this notch has been hogged out to fit 
the standard finger for this machine. as they were when I took them out. I am more concerned with getting them in there evenly. And yes, the jib is good. So, we've got a new 9610 hook assembly, a new 20U shuttle that has been modified to fit with a 306 positioning finger. Oh. Let me get maximum clearance here for the feed dogs. And rotate this to get maximum clearance over the jib. And at that point, it should slip in. I am actually going to put the position finger back into place before I tighten down the hook. I believe the next step would be to do a rough time Have the point of the hook lined up. You will sometimes notice some binding when you replace this. Often the preliminary setting on the positioning finger is a little too tight. You should be looking for roughly 20 thousandths of an inch clearance between the end of the finger and the shuttle. There we go. Okay, that's 
pretty good for a trial setup. Now, first we need to take out the end shake. Yeah. That has pretty much taken out the end play. Now, you don't want it so tight that it's binding. So, you can still feel rotational slop without drag, but the end shake is out. That's good. Fifteen thousandths clearance there. That seems to be lined up about right. So
So, at this point, we take one final adjustment with the needle deflected all the way to this side, all the way to the left. You run the hook down, and when it passes the needle, Make sure that it is still above the needle eye because at this point if it's below the needle eye on the zigzag it'll start skipping stitches on the left. If you need to change this then you adjust the needle bar height. Normally, you don't have to do that. It does look like it's teeny, teeny bit close. But yeah, at that point, she looks pretty good.